he did nothing wrong. You know? <laughs> that's, you know, yeah. You know, that's why I said America is going. To, we can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. Uh, asked about shoving Brown in the chest, Graham replied, yeah, it should have been more forceful because in that training, I mean, uh, I tried to keep it from escalating, so I just pushed him with my finger. That training shows that you should strike the person straight up in the chest very forcefully to actually move them back, and I didn't do that. See, the arrogant, pompous, racist little white boys that need, they cowards, and they only feel they nuts when they got a gun and they can uh, brutalize and they can um, demean and devalue people, that's when they feel like men because really they don't have any balls. They, 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 they lack testicular fortitude. They're punks, what we call on the streets, punks. And so what they do is they get off on um, dominating and peop uh, people basically who know they know haven't done anything wrong. I'm not talking about the cases where they're justified. I'm talking about every time they look at a black person, they see a easy target or somebody they can rape or rob or disuse and abuse and nothing going to be done about it. But this day in America is changing. It's changing. Uh, Graham, who received a two-day suspension in the incident, also explained his thought process when he saw Brown's car running and parked across two handicapped spots. He said he thought it looked a, like a perfect armed robbery car and that he couldn't let Brown pass because there would have been dead people in Walgreens. Uh, okay. In the filing, Thompson noted Graham had not mentioned those suspicions to uh, uh, officers. He didn't mention that to the suspicion to the officers who responded at the scene. Collins was asked about Graham's behavior in his own deposition and he said he did not believe Graham had any knowledge of Brown was trying to commit a crime. As Sterling Brown is walking out of Walgreens as if he was an armed robbery suspect, he do one of two things. He either walk towards the officer and shoot him or run the other way, Collins said. Mr. Brown walked towards the officer and started talking with him. Office, another officer, Eric Andre, who was fired for a social media post after Brown's arrest, said he didn't feel that the threat was as high as everybody seemed to make it. He said he would have sent some of the officers on the scene to back uh, to patrol. That way, you're not surrounding someone with Tim Cops, he said. I mean, I'm a cop. I wouldn't want all these cops surrounding me. Okay, this is why he got, he, he, was, a, he was fired for his social media posts. Yet he said he didn't feel the threat was high as everybody seemed to make it. And he said that he would have sent some of the officers on the scene back to patrol. Wow. Why is he fired? Maybe I'm missing something. There was nothing specific that made me suspect he had a gun. Some officers and sergeants involved in Brown's arrest had written in reports or said in internal interviews that they believed that Brown might be armed because of his hand movements and because officers saw a large paper target with bullet holes in the car. God damn, they be lying. Sergeant Jeffrey Kruger, who received a 10-day suspension in this, in this case, said in a deposition that he did not recall seeing a huge bulge in Brown's pocket. There was nothing specific about his pockets that made me suspect that he had a gun, Kruger said. Um, Thompson also asked Kruger about the statements to Internal Affairs in which the sergeant said Brown really got agitated with me looking into his vehicle, and now I see a gun. I did not see a gun, Kruger said to Thompson. So if you never saw a gun, then why are you telling internal affairs that you saw a gun, Thompson said. I must have misspoke and nobody caught it. The 30-page filing contains a fraction of evidence gathered as part of the lawsuit, Thompson said. 
In a statement responding to Brown's motion, the city attorney's office said that the $400 settlement offer, while approved by the Common Con Council, was never filed with the court, so there was nothing to strike. His motion makes no sense because he could only accept or reject the officer, Langley said, adding that the city is not required to file it with the court. His failure to either accept or reject results in consequences for him and his client, Langley said. He made the choice to make sure and he didn't make it. He had a choice to make it and he didn't make it. So they're mad that the guy didn't take the $400 settlement. A spokeswoman declined to respond to a journal sentinel inquiry about the officer's deposition or the officer's lawsuit itself, citing pending litigation. Speaking to reporters about Brown's case outside the city budget hearing, Police Chief Alfonso Morales highlighted the department's training on professional communication, implicit bias, and fair and impartial policing. We debrief our video footage. Can we do better? Can we? What can we learn from? And who can we learn from at any given district or shift? He said. We can't get better like any sports team does. Dude, this ain't no game. This is real life. And, and y'all ain't gonna get no better until y'all start getting fired, kicked off the job, fired. You can no longer cover, have a, a union that's gonna cover up from this type of behavior, these type of um, police officers that wanna patrol the streets of, of black areas to beat up on people and take the frustration that they may have for their wife and their children and their situation out on people. This is insane. Well, y'all, I mean, I want to know what y'all think about this. Because Milwaukee police violated his 4th and 14th Amendment rights during his arrest and tasing him. See, that's number one. And while two sergeants and an officer received suspension, their discipline was not for the unlawful use, I mean, was not for the unlawful and race-based arrest and detention of Brown or excessive force used against him according to the suit. That's not what they were suspended for. <laughs> and then hours after the arrest, this Andre dude wrote, nice meeting Sterling Brown of the Milwaukee Bucks at work this morning. <laughs> LOL. Hashtag. Fear the deer. More than three months later, Andrade shared a meme with NBA star Kevin Durant mocking his hair. More than a week after the department released a video of Brown's arrest leading to public scrutiny, Andrea wrote a post about J.R. Smith of the Cleveland Cavaliers after some team lost game one of the NBA Finals. I hope J.R. Smith double parks in Walgreens handicap spots when he's in Milwaukee so they can beat him up the way they did Sterling Brown. I mean, this is really a mess. There's, you know, I'm going to keep you guys abreast of this story. Um... But this is really sick. Smith had rebounded um, a missed free throw while the game was tied. And the clock ran out. And that's why he said that shit. He, that's what he was mad. Okay. The chief previously declined to comment uh, what they, what they invest, uh, what, you know, what he did. And to talk about it, actually. Andrea's post about Smith was an admission that he and other defendant officers are allowed to engage in unlawful attacks and arrests on African Americans without justification and then relish such events without any fear of real discipline, the suit says. Because ain't nothing going to be done to these white boys. They running up and down here. And some black ones too, the self-hate haters, running up and down here. We already got enough problems dealing with the dysfunction that you have, con with that poverty has con con uh, contributed to in these communities. Y'all know damn well poverty breeds crime. 
So it's not the other way around. Crime don't breed poverty. Poverty be breeds crime. Okay? Because if I take everything away from you, and all the shit that you stole, and if I take it away from you, you'll be out there stealing and prostituting and whoring and selling drugs too. That's what I'm talking about. I'm sick of y'all with y'all lies. I'm sick of how you handling this. I'm sick of this whole system full of infidels and riffraff and evil people that have no bit of humanity in them, starting from the top all the way on down. It's a cesspool of nastiness of shit is what it is, a cesspool of it. And I know this video is probably going to be struck or demonetized. I really don't care at this point. All, I'm, I, all I would hope that y'all do is to at least like the video. Okay, like it. Tell me what y'all think about this. Is it me? Am I overreacting? I mean, these super officers, like I said, same thing in Philly. Same thing with Amber Geiger. Same thing everywhere you go. These police officers are killing us and making jokes about the shit on Facebook. And y'all expect us to live in harmony with this? This is ridiculous. And I'm going to go now before I say something I'm going to be sorry for. So I want to know how y'all feel. Please give me something to respond to. Because the more I read this, uh, uh, like this right here, telling him to take his hands out of his pocket, he, had, he didn't move. He said, I, hold on, I've got stuff in my hands. It was January. If anybody know what it feels like in Wisconsin in January, you tell me why half a dozen squad cars got to show up for one guy. And see, they didn't recognize him as a Milwaukee Buck. They just saw nigga. Nigga, nigga, nigga. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm angry. And I want to know who out here understand what I'm talking about. Because we cannot continue to live. Either we're going to learn to live together or we're going to perish as some damn fools. This stuff can't keep going on. You like what you hear like subscribe and share y'all I, I i'll see you in the next video